Hi everyone, Karen Alari here and welcome to this little acrylic painting tutorial. In this one we're going to be painting this rainbow tree. It's a great tutorial for the beginning artist and it would be a lot of fun to do if you get a group of your friends together for an evening and just try painting or just at, at home on your own. It's a fun little beginning video. So here is the supplies and you can also find the list of supplies down in the video description. I'm using golden acrylic paints. These are regular acrylic paints, but you don't golden is a little bit on the pricier side. They're great paints, but use you can use whatever paints that you have. Just know with the less expensive paints you might have to do a few more layers to get the same coverage. So you've got your paints, you've got a few brushes there. I've got some flat brushes in three different sizes and again the description will be down there but when you're using acrylic paint you want to be sure you have a brush that's got some spring to it you don't some, want something that's really soft like uh, a watercolor brush and this flat shape to the brush it's got corners to it is really great you can make anything from a a large uh, brush stroke to a small one by using the corner so it's really very versatile so you want to get a flat brush uh, we've got the line drawing there for the painting that you can use or not use depending on your comfort level. You're going to need some sort of palette to put your paint on. I'm using a Masterson Stay Wet palette and I'll have a link to a video showing you how I set that up. But if you don't have that, don't worry about it. You can use a paper plate. That works just fine. You want something to keep your water in. I've got a regular paint uh, water container on the lower right, but you can use a uh, paper cup, a plastic cup, whatever you've got. You're just going to need a good amount of water for rinsing. So I've also got a palette knife which is good for mixing your paints but not necessary either. You will need a pencil of some sort. A ruler is helpful and I've a little bit of watercolor paper which is great for practicing mixing your paints and deciding which colors of paint you want to use. If you don't have these exact paint colors don't worry about it. Uh, go with what you've got. But seeing as this is a rainbow, it's really nice to have tube paints and oranges and purples and greens and the and the secondary colors because they just make more vivid colors. So gather your materials together. You're going to need some paper towels as well and a canvas. I just use regular canvases that I get at Michaels or wherever. And in this one, we're going to be using a square format. So regardless of what size you use, you're probably going to want a square. So we're going to hop right in, and the first thing you want to do is tone your canvas. And that just means covering up the white of the canvas. I'm using this sort of an orangish color because it just happened to be left over on my canvas. But don't worry, you can use any color for this stage. You'd want to use your largest brush. And this large brush can be a little bit softer than the ones you're going to use for the rest of the painting. Um, you just want to get a brush that's going to help you cover the, the canvas as easily as possible. Now the paint is watered down a little bit in this, in this stage. So you're just going to want to mix a little bit of water with your paint right on the palette. And that's going to help it flow easier and not build up too much layers. You want to cover the white of the canvas but you don't want to build up a thick layer that's going to take a while to dry. The beauty of working with acrylics if you haven't worked with them before is that they dry quickly and so you're you're able to layer, layer on layer uh, in in one setting. So this whole painting I think I spent a little over an hour on it. This video is just about an hour long so it doesn't you can you can just keep moving forward and do another layer and it's not going to mix with the layer below which is really um, makes it very forgiving I call it acrylic the forgiving medium anyway so you can see don't put too much water in your uh, paint because that will keep it from bonding together and staying on but I you know just enough to make it a little bit sloshy so it just puts a thin layer that you can kind of see through a little bit and again any color at this stage it really doesn't matter uh, you don't want to go too dark because in this next stage now we're going to be drawing over the top of it so this is the line drawing for this painting and you can I'll put a link in the description below 
so that you can print it out. It, this part of it, I'm just kind of making it into a grid so I can more easily transfer the drawing to my painting. Um, it would actually be easier if you went ahead and cut the square out so you're just matching the edges of the paper instead of trying to eyeball through the paper like I'm doing. But all I did was fold it in half and then in half again. So you basically end up with, with uh, eight squares, you're in eights, and that helps you just transfer that drawing onto your canvas to get the right proportions. This painting is, is very loosey-goosey. It don't have to be exact at all, which makes it fun for the beginner, but it's nice to at least have these lines so you leave an equal amount of space for each of the colors. I think the first time I did this painting I ended up with no room left for my purple at the end, which uh, purple is my favorite color, so that just didn't work. So that's all that this drawing does, it's just kind of give you a road map so that you uh, have room for everything that you want to be doing uh, in the painting. So after you get it all folded out and I, and I put some lines with the pencil on the paper to make that even more obvious. I'm going to be doing the same with my canvas. Now this canvas is 12 inches by 12 inches so it's square and any kind of a square works and in fact you could do this on any shape of canvas. You just have more space on the sides or on the top however you want to work it. So I just marked out since this is 12 inches at 3 inches and 6 inches on the top and bottom and the sides and now I'm just drawing lines to create the same grids on my canvas as I have on my line drawing and this is a great way to start any kind of painting especially when uh, you're first starting out just to get your proportions right and to get your just your overall roadmap to where you're going so you don't have to worry about that. I don't, I don't suggest doing a really detailed drawing because that kind of blocks you in. So you notice you just notice where the lines meet the other lines and go one square at a time and look at whether this line meets at about a third of the way between spaces or a halfway and make those little marks and then connect your lines real simply uh, don't worry about being exact. Don't spend too much time on this or get too bogged down. You just want a road map, as I said before, so that you can get started on the fun part, and that's the painting. So what we're gonna the first thing we're gonna do when we start our painting here is we're going to do what is called a block in. So we won't go straight into painting the way that the finished painting looks. Instead, we want to lay down the colors in the general, in the area that they're going to be in the general color, just to give us a starting point. And it also helps you, just don't, you don't have to worry about being really exact or painting within the lines. This is definitely not coloring book time. You don't need to paint within the lines. You just want to get something that's similar and in the same spots. So you can see I'm starting with my alizarin crimson here. Alizarin crimson is a dark red color and I'm generally going to be starting with my dark colors in each of these color areas. And starting with the dark colors just helps you have something to then layer on top of and you have those dark colors sort of peeking through as shadow colors. So just using that uh, larger of my flat brushes, not the biggest one, that one we only use to block in our canvas. Now we're in that, that middle size brush there and we're just blocking in that color. You can see I'm only using alizarin crimson. I'm not even uh, mixing with anything else at this point. You can also see that I'm working outside the lines. So you notice I purposefully moved my brush outside of the lines a little bit there. So that, that's our sort of red area in our rainbow and the next the next band is going to be the orange. Now I'm using a vat orange here which is a straight out of the tube orange but if you don't have that go ahead and mix your red and your yellow together and see what kind of an orange you get. Depending on which red and which yellow you're using it might 
be a kind of muddy orange that isn't going to look real good, but don't worry about it. You'll add more yellow. That often helps to get a brighter orange color. Um, and use that watercolor paper that I that you saw in the supplies section to practice and practice mixing together your orange if you don't have a tube orange and see which of your colors that you have will mix together to be the nicest uh, orange. I'm using the yellow I'm using is a, a Hansa yellow uh, medium and the red is a naphthal red light and those actually mix together to make a, a fairly good orange um, so don't worry about using mixing together and using them it's great it works too so this yellow that I'm putting on there is called Indian yellow it's basically a dark yellow um, and again it's really nice to have a dark color to then come back on top of with your lighter colors if you don't have uh, the Indian yellow you just have a yellow if you mix a little bit of your red in there and a little bit of your blue in there you'll probably you'll get a darker yellow color it will also be a little muddier so uh, if you can get an Indian yellow I would recommend it it's a great color especially if you do a lot of landscapes so this green I'm using is called thalo green it's a very bright and very vivid green uh, but you know you can use again whatever you've got this green actually needs to be toned down a lot. You can hear, see here I'm adding some Indian yellow to it to give it a more natural and more yellow green uh, look to it versus that very vivid uh, blue green color. But again at this stage don't worry about getting the colors exact. Uh, just We're just filling in, blocking in those big shapes to get our overall uh, idea of where we're going with this canvas and then we're going to come back after that and put some more layers on top to get that look of, of the leaves going on in the tree. So that's what I really like about this layering technique is especially when you're first getting started, uh, don't worry about it looking perfect. This is mostly going to get covered up again, but it's just to lay in those blocks of color and so you don't get lost on the canvas. It's real easy if you just start in one corner and move to another to kind of get lost in, in what you're doing, but this gives you a, a real uh, road map of where you're going. So that blue there is called ultramarine blue. It's a wonderful blue. I definitely suggest if you're going to be doing any more painting, especially you uh, have that blue. It's always on my palette and it's a great richly colored blue it leans towards sort of the warm colors almost almost even purpley but it doesn't mix real well with other colors um, and I'll show you later in the video uh, that that I actually added another blue to my palette once I started mixing so this is dioxazine purple and it's also a great very dark purple I've mixed it uh, with a little bit of white there. You really have to add a little bit of white with dioxazine purple generally when you use it because it's so very dark. It, it, it's almost black. So you can see I'm adding just a tad bit of white to it at this point because I want to keep the color dark still. I don't, I don't want it to be light because I'm going to add my dark colors over the top. And that's something that you'll do a lot with acrylic painting is uh, dark colors first and then add those light colors over the top. And in acrylics you have a small amount of mixing time before they dry on the canvas but it's only a few minutes so uh, that's something that you learn to work with with acrylics and you learn to do any blending you want to do right away and then uh, before you move on to the next area. So see just really loosely uh, putting in these colors. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up a gray. Now if you're uncomfortable with mixing grays, uh, you can use a black tube color, but I don't recommend it. The best way 
to get neutral colors or grade colors is to mix together uh, the colors on your palette, your primary colors. So I'm making this neutral gray color by mixing complementary colors on the color wheel. So I'm mixing purple with yellow. And you can you can use you can make a gray using any complementary colors. So you can use red and green, you can use yellow and purple, you can use blue and orange. And any one of those combinations will mix together to give you some form of a neutral gray. You can see here I'm adding a little blue to it. The different pigments are going to react differently with each other as you mix. So you may have to adjust that gray color to get something as neutral as you wanted. So the reason I added blue is because the gray was starting to look a little brownish to me and brown is a neutral form of orange and the complementary color to orange is blue. So I added a tiny bit of blue and that gave me a more neutral mid-tone gray. You notice I also added white to it because I do want the value to be uh, in that mid-tone. Don't worry about all these words I'm throwing out, value and, and neutral and all these words if you're not used to them, but they're just, they're, they're words that help us in painting and learning to paint to understand what we're doing and to communicate about it a little more. So I have a bunch of other videos on things like value and whatnot, and those are great too, but this, this video is really just a fun little video, colorful and easy to do. And so that's what we're focusing on this time is just having some fun with these bright rainbow colors, which are my favorite. So what we're doing here with the gray is we're painting around the other colors. And this is called negative painting. Again, one of those painting words. But it's, it's a really a great way to paint is we, we tend to think of painting as painting positively. So if I want to paint a tree, I paint the leaves onto a background. But another way to do it that actually comes up with some more kind of painterly outcome is to paint your solid colors in and then paint the background back into the solid colors to create those, uh, those shapes and those forms. So we're done with our block in here, right? Is this done with the painting? No, I'm just kidding. We're not done with the painting because it, it's this is what I call the ugly stage. But it's really important to take the time to do it because it it sets the stage for the rest of the painting and makes the rest of the painting easier. So here you can see that I've shifted brushes again from that wider uh, flat brush to a slightly narrower flat brush and you don't want to get don't go too small and depending on your canvas size this original painting the one you see up in the right hand side that we're using as a reference was 24 inches by 24 inches so it was twice the size of this one so uh, I really didn't even go down to this small of a brush in that painting so and if you're working on a little 6 by 6 or a 4 by 4 you'd probably have to go to a smaller size but use use the biggest size that you're comfortable with I would say. So now uh, I've this is a, a dark color I think I made that I wasn't watching but uh, with alizarin crimson probably a little bit of blue or purple purple I think alizarin and purple so we're starting by just putting in some dark shapes and now I've gone adding red and some white so for a lighter version of that so when you think about creating the uh, texture on this tree trunk you want to think you, know, you don't need to get really specific but you just want to think about there being bumps on the tree trunk, lumps and bumps and so you're going to have some light areas where the sun might be hitting the top of a bump and, and some darker areas underneath uh, those lumps and bumps. I'm going to define those some of those back branches as being behind so that I'll make those darker and I'll look at some of the branches uh, in the front as being in front and so I'll put make those lighter and yours certainly doesn't have to be just like mine just think in terms of 
being sure you get some of those dark and light shapes in there. So you can see I'm wiping my brush off on paper towels in between so that you don't get too much buildup uh, on your brush. You don't want you, won't, you don't want a lot of paint lobbing into the back part of the brush. That's called the ferrule. And you don't uh, want that globby paint on there. So I'll use that paper towel to wipe off that paint in between going to another color. Now if I was moving to a radically different color, I would also rinse my brush in between. But now I'm just going in these same red tones. So I don't really need to rinse my brush. I don't mind if those colors mix a little bit. In fact, I like it because I'm getting all kinds of different slight variations. So you can see there I've put some white in with that red, a little bit of yellow, and I'm just touching in here and there and experimenting with those colors to see if I like them. I know I need some lighter tones to go with my darker tones, but I also want this to come across as a red area. And looking at it, I just decided that was kind of a little bit too pinkish with too much white in there. So I'm coming back with some of that straight naphthal red light to uh, blend back in and bring some more red tones into the trunk and into that first layer of leaves. You notice the way I'm holding the brush. I'm not holding it like a pencil. I'm holding it on the side. And that's really important when you're trying to paint a little more loosely and not get real tight. If we hold a brush like a pencil, we tend to come in real close and get real tight in our painting. And that doesn't work so well for this kind of style of painting. The other thing I'm doing as I'm using my brush is I'm you can you can see I'm using the brush in all different sizes and directions so there I'm using the flat of the brush and that then I turn it over on its side and I'm using the corner of the brush the side of the brush the end of the brush I move my hand around my arm around so that the brush is making marks that are not all going the same way so it's really easy just to go up there and set the brush on the canvas all go in the same direction and you want to guard against that so you do that by spinning the brush around see there I'm using just the very corner of the brush the very edge of the brush and then sometimes I go back to the flat of the brush so you get all these different sizes and shapes of marks don't think about painting leaves just think about painting a variety of shapes on your canvas. So now I'm doing some rinsing. We've got our first layer of reds in there and we're going to come back to this. So don't, don't get, get so worried about it that you feel like, oh, this has to be perfect. No, we're going to work in layers and we're going to have three layers at least before we're done so that we can build uh, texture as we go. Each of those layers builds up more texture in our painting and you get this feeling of depth and uh, all these leaves going on in there. So I'm moving on to the orange uh, band in this tree, I guess, of the rainbow. And I've just got my, using my straight orange and a little bit of white and here I've added a little bit of the alizarin crimson into it as well just to create variety of color and tone and to add some darks to this area as well. And you can see that all I'm doing is these little dabs. One thing you want to be careful of as you're painting is be sure you get enough paint on your brush. So be go ahead and get a good amount of paint on your brush there I'm adding some yellow to it to make a more yellow orange and then set that set that um, brush down and leave it alone so one thing that a beginning painter often tends to do is to keep brushing and brushing and brushing over the same spot as if you're petting your cat or something, you know, just 
putting the paint down and then brush, brush, brush to get it the way you want. Don't do that. Instead, make sure you have plenty of paint on the brush and think more in terms of that you're just laying paint on the canvas. You're just just delivering paint to the canvas in one brush stroke. So just put it on there and leave it. Go on to the next space. So here I've started with some yellow with white added to it and then decided that was a little bit too light of a color so I went back and added a little bit of that Indian yellow and that brings the the value back down a little bit and makes it more of a rich color when you add white to paint you're also diluting the pigment so the color isn't going to be as vibrant and one thing we're really trying to do with this painting is keep our colors very bright bright and vibrant you can see there that green is still a little bit wet and so it was mixing with the yellow so at any point in this painting process if you start to feel like your paints are mixing together the colors are mixing together too much and you're starting to get mud just stop for a minute take a break uh, you only need to take like a five minute break and then the paint will dry enough that it will stop mixing together because in this painting we're not really looking for mixing so much as we're just looking for these layers of color on one on the other. Again you can see as I'm doing these bands I'm moving a little bit into the next band and the last band. You don't want a real strong line but you instead want them to kind of blend together. So as you're using the colors you're blending from yellow to green now so I've got my green and I'm adding some yellow to it I think that was white I added to it and you're adding yellow you're adding white and you're just putting it up there and starting starting to see that feeling of depth which is created by having those darks and the lights be careful here that you don't cover up everything that you've already put down it's very tempting to just keep going with that and keep covering it up and then you've kind of lost what you've done before so adding more yellow to that green again just mixing it right there and then also putting a few of these down on the ground this is going to be the area of the fallen leaves so we're just putting that in there at the same time be sure to uh, don't be afraid to rinse out your brush and dry it off and after you rinse your brush you want to pat it dry a little bit on your paper towel as well and because you don't want to get too much paint in with these it'll just make the paint runny and that's not what we're looking for so here I added some ultramarine blue to that green looking for a blue green color to make that transition between the green band and the blue band but as you can see ultramarine as I might have mentioned before doesn't mix real well it goes muddy pretty quickly uh, in a mixture it's a beautiful color but and it makes very neutral natural looking tones but in this case we're going for those bright vivid colors so I'm struggling a little bit with that ultramarine here I was hoping just to have one blue which would make it you know easier for you you wouldn't have to buy another tube so here I've added white to it and you can see how sort of almost chalky that's uh, made the blue look there so now I'm going away from that vivid colors as you can see in the reference painting I'm using up in the top you can see that blue there is very much more uh, vivid coming back with some straight ultramarine to try to get the uh, the chromatic rich chromatic color back in there but it's really not working very well so the next thing I'm going to do here is give up on that and come in with some phthalo blue and phthalo blue like phthalo green is a very vivid strong color it's great for mixing with other colors because it's very transparent and highly staining so and this is the thalo blue which is the green shade and so it makes a very nice uh, blue green color so I just added a little bit of thalo into that mixture I already had going on and you can see already that it uh, 
it's bringing more of that chroma back, that vivid color, which is what I was looking for in the in the blue band here. So it's you know it's all an experiment, and you are likely going to be maybe working with different colors from the tubes. So don't be afraid to experiment. And in this painting, if you you know have some experimental colors up there underneath the other colors, that's all good. It just adds for more interest and texture in the painting. So it's nothing to worry about. So that's kind of, I'm pretty happy with that blue band and moving on to the purple band. You can see it's still not, I'm not, in this layer, I'm not getting to a finished look per se. When you're painting, you, you go from the big shapes and then into the medium sized shapes and the smaller shapes. So you're thinking big to small. And right now we're kind of in the medium shapes. So we've got a lot of same kind of similar size shapes going on in there and we're just laying in these layers to to make more interest and it also makes it easier because you don't have to worry about making mistakes in this one there's no mistake that you can make that you can't just come in with another layer and fix it which is really a lot of fun so also adding more of that blue and bringing some of the blue back into the purple layer adding white to that purple to get a lighter color of purple and it's really interesting the different pigments because the ultramarine blue when I added white to it got very chalky looking but this dioxazine purple is such a, a, a clear rich color that you can add white to it same thing with that phthalo blue but you'll get used to it. as the more you paint you'll get more used to the different colors, the different pigments and how they actually work together which is a lot of fun getting to know your pigments. So we kind of have I would say our second layer done here in terms of just going back over the whole thing and starting to add in texture and interest. So now we're going to go back and I'm going to make start by making some more of that gray and making your gray, you could uh, definitely use your palette knife here if you want to. It makes it a little easier to mix larger amounts of paint. So I've started again with the purple and the Indian yellow. This time I added a little bit of that phthalo blue into it right away. Because I know that the purple and, and Indian yellow tend to make a slightly brownish tone. So the blue will bring it back to a really neutral gray. You notice I'm really picking where I'm where I'm pulling the white from in my pile of white paint. So you want to be careful that you don't get your colors really muddy by you know picking up a pile so I just went into that Indian yellow if I picked up a pile that had red already contaminated in it then that's gonna mess up my my color blends. So you want to pick an as as clear of a color area in your pile as you can and don't be afraid to stop especially with the white and add more uh, to your palette that's nice and clean. Clean color is key for this painting especially and anytime you want to work with really bright colors and avoid having that sort of muddy look. So you can see I came back in with, and this is a slightly lighter version of the gray. Um, something else you'll find out about acrylics is that they dry darker. And so uh, this, this will dry a little bit darker, but it is going to be a little lighter. And that's totally up to you how dark you want your gray background to be. Uh, I wanted it to be a little lighter. So you can see what I'm doing again here with this next layer of gray is I'm painting around the shapes that I've already created and that refines and develops those shapes and it makes for uh, of some very interesting forms and shapes that you wouldn't necessarily get by just you know painting positively and painting a leaf but if you paint the background around a blob of color to create a leaf 
then it, it uh, turns out really nicely and you get these really painterly looks. So that's all I'm doing at this point is just coming in and painting around. Now I know I also want there to be gray ground behind these fallen leaves on the ground. So I'm coming in and adding quite a bit more of the gray, painting around the color bands again in order to make uh, fallen leaves. Reshaping my branches. And you know, your branches and the way you painted your leaves, you're going to find interesting shapes there that you want to keep and other areas that maybe didn't work as well that you're going to paint over. So listen to your painting. Look at your painting and uh, listen to what it's telling you and go with the marks that you've already laid down. Go with, don't try to force it into looking exactly like mine or force it into what you think it should be, but instead really interact with your painting. Look at the the shapes that are there and oh this this area looks really good in here oh I can tell this got a little heavy and, or this one wasn't you know so think about that as you're going and work with the painting instead of trying to mold it into what you think it should be again make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush and you can see when I'm working down in the area that's on the ground I'm keeping my brush strokes really horizontal because I'm the ground is horizontal so more so than working up in the tree I'm, I'm creating these horizontal shapes by keeping my brush horizontal and my brush stroke moving in a horizontal pattern this is true with water and all kinds of whenever you're kind of working on that ground plane that horizontal plane as you want to think about making your strokes horizontal. So again coming back into the the top and I kind of like you know you don't have to worry about it being a really flat color and not having any of that darker gray show through. I kind of like having a bit of the darker gray in there. It also gives a feeling of the brush strokes and more of a painterly feel. Reshaping those branches. Now I'm thinking about you know that those branches are going to continue into the tree a little bit more and I'm making that edge very uneven. Now I'm adding, we call these sky holes, so I'm adding little holes into the tree itself where the sky is peeking back through and that lightens up the tree and also creates uh, the form of the of the leaves. So you really want to think about those external shapes that's what we really look at like the shapes around the edges um, that's what really defines what we're looking at and tells the mind okay these are leaves it's not drawing in little tiny detail it's just providing a shape and then letting the, the mind fill in the rest and if any time you start getting too much blending like when you're trying to put this gray in and it just seems like it's just mixing, it's not staying gray, then just take a five minute break and let the painting dry for five minutes and then you'll be able to move on and have it be nice and dry. So again going back to some more sky holes. The key to these is again to try to vary that shape size and shape of the of the holes and also think about where your branches are and think about the tree being kind of two dimen three dimensional and having some space to it but especially along the outward edges it's really good to get that some of the you'll notice some of the marks go all the way in and connect to the gray that are around the edges and some are more interior to the tree and that gives you that that variety and lightens up the tree so it's just not a band so you can see that these shapes are being formed not by drawing in individual leaves but just by building up layers of shapes 
coming back in with some of the dark now again starting back with one more layer to create even more uh, variations dark to light and also slight color variations deciding which of those branches are behind the other branches so those I'm making darker and a little bit of darkness underneath the branches and here I'm just following along those branches and in those sky holes that I made previously I'm showing the continuation of the branches throughout the tree just little twigs and, and branches just to give that feeling that it's continuing working back in adding some more of that red to my alizarin crimson mix there and you notice how I just keep the mixes on my palette the, mixing the reds all generally in the same area the greens in the same area the blues in the same area and it's only when I need a really clear unmixed color that I'm gonna move over to a different spot because mostly in this one it's really nice to have those slight variations of colors in between you know red oranges and yellow oranges and yellow greens here adding again some little tiny you know leaves off of the edge there that might be falling working into even more red now so you can see we're on our third and final pass basically of creating these leaves by just layering this and in each case looking at what's there before and working with it and going further with it enhancing the things that are working or repainting the things that aren't and I'm, I'm starting to think about on the leaves on the ground that they're going to have a darker area underneath and a lighter area on top of them so as I'm laying in those darker and lighter colors I'm creating those forms as I go adding even a little more lightness to the trunk to give that feeling of a bumpy knobby trunk going on there and you'll also notice in this this third pass you're using you're making smaller marks and using you know less paint less marks so you started with those big shapes the medium shapes and now we're working into smaller shapes and just thinking in terms of breaking up the big shapes into smaller shapes um, not necessarily painting a leaf but breaking up the big shapes into smaller shapes and making sure that you have a variety from dark to light and that creates that feeling of form going on there I'm working back into the orange band now again with my that orange which I'm adding yellow to because really that orange out of the tube is a very bright and almost uh, very unnatural I guess you'd say looking color uh, but you know have fun with these colors that's the point of this painting is to use it as a way to explore color and how they mix together what I'm thinking about as as I'm looking at these shapes one of the things that I'm doing is wherever there's an area that the paint didn't cover completely it's kind of kind of sketchy doesn't have a nice solid paint coverage I'm being sure to add more paint to that area and if you're using a, more of a student quality paint you might find that you maybe even have to do one more layer this way because they tend not to cover as well so but don't give up just come back let it dry a little bit and do another layer and you'll get the coverage that you need so there you can see I went back with a darker alizarin crimson and I'm putting those dark areas underneath my fallen leaves now as they start to shape up into actual leaf shapes by painting the gray around them and now painting the dark underneath them and that starts giving me more of that leaf shape so coming in with some Indian yellow here I'm being really careful my Indian yellow has gotten pretty contaminated with the other colors uh, especially when I was mixing the gray so I got a lot of the purple up in there so I'm being very careful to find a clean spot 
because if you get a little bit of that purple into this color at this point that's going to really neutralize it and make it look gray which you don't want so if you're having trouble with your colors going too gray go ahead and squeeze out some fresh color and don't use that contaminated color that you've got going on again being very careful to uh, not paint over everything that I've done in my layers before but just add another layer on top a smaller shape generally on top of those larger shapes and again I started with that darker yellow because this is our yellow band but I'm putting the darker yellow under it and now I can come back with some lighter yellow on top of it again being careful to find uh, as clean of a color as I can to work with and the, so this color is somewhere in between it's a little more yellow yellow than the orange but it's still got some of that orange in so you use the same pile and I just added more yellow to it yellow is a very uh, tends to be a very pretty transparent color and it's kind of a weakly staining color so you'll find you have to use a lot more yellow than some of your other colors say like a thalo blue or a thalo green or diox purple are going you'll use a lot less for it to come through because it just isn't as strong of a pigment so you can see how I've got this lighter yellow and I'm just doing little little tiny marks now working around breaking up some of those sky holes that I did earlier to make sure that they're in different sizes as well and have some of the color come back into the sky holes. Painting is very much a back and forth kind of thing. I've got a lot of paint on my brush right now so that I can just lay down a little daub of paint and that will, the canvas will just pull that paint off. I'm not brushing it, I'm not blending it all together because if you, you know, keep stroking that, that, that paint stroke you're going to end up with mud your edges will get soft which is you want sometimes but in this painting we don't so again putting some yellow these are lighter yellow marks so I'm using those horizontal brush strokes and adding them horizontally just making a mark that way added a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson in with that to give me a darker shade to then come back and put under the leaves. Be sure you're holding your brush on the side there, not like a pencil. It's very tempting when you get to these smaller shapes to want to switch to the pencil holding and you don't want to do that because you want to keep the brush stroke loose and happy and not get it too tight. So I'm just looking at that band of color and I added in back in a little bit more dark and now I'm going to be moving on to the green so I added a little more yellow to that green so I get this sort of transition color between the yellow and the green and I get some yellow greens in there. Again being sure to move a little bit outside of the band to create these these marks within the other bands. If you're working like on a larger canvas like I did on the painting that we're looking at as our reference, uh, you end up with smaller shapes because the canvas is bigger. I could have gone to an even smaller brush here to get smaller shapes but I just didn't, well I didn't want to, but if you want to have more of a, a small shape in the end it, it ends up looking a little bit busier a little bit more like detail then that's certainly something you can do but I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily suggest it I think that, that it comes across great like this too and you know and of course if you're using an even smaller square shape your brush strokes if you use the same brush are going to look even larger so you might want to move to a slightly smaller brush Again, I love these flat brushes because as you can see the variety of marks you can make with them 
you get some nice crisp edges, get some little tiny marks using the very corner, you can get long line type marks using the edge, and the key to that is to keep changing the direction and the orientation of your brush. Flip it around, spin it around, move your whole arm around to guard against having that like the same like as if you used a, a stamp and stamped the same shape all over your, your painting. You notice how I move around to each time I pick up a new color I'm, I add some of that color throughout the color band and then come back with another color. So here I've gone back to the darker bluish green colors that I had, added a little bit of white to that so I get some more of that area between the blue and the green to have a few more blue-green colors. Kind of just repeating the same thing we did in the other layers but we're also getting smaller less paint each time we're putting on the canvas and being more aware of where we're putting those uh, colors we want to be sure not to cover up what we've got but instead enhance it so so uh, take a look at it another good thing to do as you're painting is to stop and step back from your painting every once in a while getting a view from the distance gives you a better overall look at what you're doing because there's a tendency to get real close to the canvas and think oh this just looks like blobs this is awful but no step back and look at it from a distance and you'll start seeing oh no now I see the whole picture and now these shapes are make a lot more sense when you get up on it it just looks like blobs of paint but when you step back you can see the overall shape that's that's uh, coming to life. I've got that lighter blue now. It's got some alizarin. It's got some, it's a mixture of the ultramarine blue and the thalo blue to give me that nice rich color. Again, work with the colors you have. This is a real fun painting to do. You could do it. It wouldn't have to be rainbow colors. You could, you know, choose your favorite colors. It could be, you know, hot pink and purple and teal or what, whatever might be your favorite colors or might even fit in with your with your decor or if you're doing this for a, a kids room um, might fit in with the colors of their room but it's it's a very uh, flexible kind of color uh, kind of painting to do again you can see I'm doing those sideways brush strokes as I those horizontal brush strokes when I'm in the leaves on the ground and then I'm doing more straight ahead shapes when I'm working into the tree itself and that gives us that feeling that that ground is horizontal got bringing back in some of that dark blue so I've got some purple that I've added to the blue there I'm getting a purple purplish blue mix somewhere in between because now I'm working on that purple band and see those little, just a little tips and taps of the shapes outside of our, our band to give a feeling of, of leaves and of the variation in size, which is really critical. I like to be sure to paint around the edges of my canvas because when I finish these, I just paint the edges black. I come back when it's dry and tape off around the edges of the painting and then I paint the edges with just black paint and it gives it a nice finished look. Added a little bit of red to that purple this time. Oftentimes when you're going to the lighter colors you're going to want to add not just white because white will cool the color off but you want to add a little bit of red or a little bit of yellow depending on the color to warm it back up when you go to the lighter colors. So if I'm doing a, a lighter orange, I'm going to add white and yellow. If I'm doing a lighter purple, I'm going to add white and red. And that just makes sure that you 
you don't go white and chalky when you add, when you go lighter in your colors. So you can see me doing it there. I added some white, and then I'm going to add a little bit of red. And a little bit goes a long way, both when you're doing that and when you're creating neutral colors, neutral grays. You want to, uh, you can always take color back out. You can't always take color. You can always add color, but you can't take it back out. So start in little tiny amounts, and then you can add to your mixtures. Because it's real easy to end up with a huge pile of paint because you're mixing and mixing and, oh, that's not the right color, I'll add some more. And you're mixing and mixing and pretty soon you've wasted a whole bunch of paint because you're just adding too much at one time. We're getting pretty close to finishing up with this. I'm adding the purple band here. And I'm going to come back and do a little bit of touch up with some gray after this. So you can see I've just gone basically through the whole process once with the block in, once with the sort of medium sized shapes, and now once again with the smaller shapes. And in between those I'm doing the negative painting with the gray to continue to sort of refine the shapes. As you're looking at this, look in terms of making sure that you have enough dark to light. So if one of the bands is looking really flat, uh, it's because you don't have enough darks in there. You don't have a, enough value shift from dark to light. So just add in some more darks, or you may need to add in some more lights. Always remember with acrylics is that they dry a little bit darker. So it's always good to err on the side of making something a little lighter than you think it needs to be um, versus making it darker. Here I'm coming back in. Some of those small shapes I put in were looking a little thin, not didn't quite cover the canvas enough, and I wanted to vary the size of them as well. So I'm coming in, and that's all I'm looking around for now is step back, take some time, step back, and look at any area in your canvas that kind of draws your attention. And for me right now, it was that orange band was starting to look, as I said, kind of flat. It didn't have as much texture as some of the others. So I came coming back in with some lighter orange to increase the more of uh, light shapes in there. And that gives it more depth adding more lights and more darks is going to give you more of a sense of depth. And you can see at this point I'm really just doing little tiny touches here and there. Um, spending more time just looking and seeing what grabs my attention in the painting and then just adding little touches here and there. Also want to come back with the darks again that band I added um, lights to it and here I'm coming back and re-establishing the dark of those the branches I've decided are behind and re-establishing same thing in this trunk if it looks flat just just tap in some dark shapes and that is what's going to give you the feeling of depth is just making sure you have darks and mediums and lights in there. Same thing within the leaves, just making sure that I've got some darks in there. Doing the same thing with the orange band still. I've got orange and I'm adding a lizard and crimson to it and just giving myself a few little darker spots here and there. Trying to bring out that orange band and give it more depth. If you are enjoying my videos, do be sure to subscribe to my channel. I've got a whole bunch of videos in there, quite a few of a more realistic style. Um, then you can join me there. So now I'm going back to creating some more gray. Again, I'm using my dioxazine purple, my Indian yellow, and just a touch of that phthalo blue. 
and I'm going to add a bunch of white to try to get that value to where I need it to be. So it's too dark, so I'm going to add some more white. And this is again where using a palette knife, you can see I've switched over to the palette knife. I'm, I'm mixing up a large amount of paint, so it's easier to do with the palette knife. It doesn't get all caught up into the, the ferrule of the brush and make a mess. So I've switched over to the palette knife and you can see you just kind of scrape it off uh, your palette and then blend it together to create your mixes. And just think about as you're doing your mix, if you're having trouble with these neutrals, just look at the color it's turning. So if it looks a little too purple, then you're going to add a little more yellow, the complementary color, just a tiny bit. This is where there's the tiny bits come in. And so here I needed some more white. I'd used up all my white, so I'm mixing that in. And you can tell here, I'd started with quite a bit of paint, and you'll find this too. So I, I can see that my pile is getting bigger and bigger because I'm trying to get it light enough to uh, be the value I want it. Adding some blue back in there, which means the color was looking too brown to me. And again, brown is a version of orange, so you're going to use the complementary color of blue to, to neutralize it even more. And you can see my pile is getting pretty big, and it's still too dark. Now that I've got it neutral where I want it, it's still too dark, so I'm having to add quite a bit more white. And when you find this happening, in, is, as opposed to starting to waste a lot of paint, go ahead and section off a portion of what you've got so far and so kind of divide your pile in two so, you, so you're not mixing into the whole pile anymore you're just mixing into part of it and that's going to get you where you want to go faster without wasting a lot of paint because if you just if I were to just keep mixing that white into the whole pile I'd end up with a huge pile of gray that I know I'm not going to use on this painting and when you use a Stay Wet palette, I can seal this up at the end of my session and the paint will stay usable for my next session, which is great. And why I suggest uh, getting one of these palettes as one of your first purchases if you're going to continue painting with acrylics. So now switching back over to my brush and I'm going to come back in with my final layer of gray. Again, just really looking at where what is already on my canvas. So the further you get into your painting process, the less you're going to be looking at your reference and the more you're going to be just looking at what you've got on the canvas in front of you, what's working, what areas are working, and what areas aren't working. So my goal here is I'm just trying to lighten up that purple band a little bit more especially around the very edges of the tree you know they're going to get it's going to get lighter and lighter you're going to have more sort of the dense leaves towards the middle of the tree and then when you get to the outer edges it gets you know sort of more light and you can see more of the background coming through i'm really focusing here on varying my shapes so that they're not all the same i don't have um, we don't have just all the same shapes going on, but I've got larger ones and smaller ones and different, not only sizes, but the actual shapes being different. Some are closer together, some are isolated more. And you can tell I've gone even a little bit lighter. Each, each time I did the grays, I went lighter. And I would suggest that. I mean, I think that this painting comes across nicely with kind of a light, lighter medium tone gray. So you can so you can tell how tiny bits of paint I'm putting down versus the the other layers where I was putting big shapes down, painting around those those sort of falling leaves that I've left those shapes.
So looking at it and seeing, I like I like to clean up to any areas where uh, the the brush stroke is kind of sketchy. You know, it's not you can kind of see the background through it. So this really helps that to to make sure your colors are nice and solid and thick. And again, you may be doing an extra layer if you're using uh, student grade paints. So don't worry about that. Just just add another layer to it and, and you'll get the coverage that you want. If you are using student grade paints, one thing I might suggest if you're, you're not wanting to afford the more expensive paints is at least buy a tube of the titanium white in golden brand or one of the better brands because white is really the key to getting nice coverage if you're if your white is nice and, and opaque and it's going to cover your canvas nicely some of the cheaper brands of white are very kind of see-through and it's really hard to get a nice coverage so if you're, and, and white is actually the cheapest pigment you can buy in 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 golden or the nicer brands so if you're going to get one tube of nice paint get your titanium white you'll you'll find that really is helpful so we're coming down real close to the to the finish of this I'm just in my last little checking here and there creating little tiny shapes think about especially along the edges where you've got sort of a larger shape just you can notice how I'm just cutting into that shape a little bit and that reforms it into a different a different shape. <laughs> I like some of those actually connecting with the ground too. Uh, so don't you don't want to make a solid gray line between the tray, the tree and the ground. Again coming back in the ground with those horizontal strokes and that helps the ground look like it's horizontal. But now I'm really looking at those shapes on the ground to make sure I'm getting a, a feeling of the leaf shape. Dark underneath, lighter on top, sort of that, that horizontal uh, shape going on there. It's going to help you in all your painting is thinking in terms of color, value, and shape. And don't think in terms of well, I'm painting a tree, or I'm painting a cat, or I'm painting a person, or I'm painting a boat. Y you just think in terms of painting a particular shape, in a particular color, in a particular value. And that's, that's what gets your brain thinking the way you need to think in order to, to make paintings. Because if your brain is thinking, I'm making a tree, it's going to want to kind of put a symbolic tree what your mind thinks of when it thinks of tree and that's what it's going to want to paint so you've got to trick it out of that by having by thinking in terms of shape color and value and forget about what it is that you're painting coming back in with a little bit of these darks coming into the home stretch i hope you enjoyed this uh, little video and uh, subscribe to my channel or check out also my website karenalari.com where you can find my online school you can find my Etsy shop you can find uh, my Facebook page where you can join me and share your paintings and get some help from me if you get stuck on this painting and need some help you can always leave a comment here in YouTube or you can jump over to my Facebook page and upload your painting and I can give you some help if you want it or you can just show off and share it with everybody else that has been trying it. And that's about the end of our little rainbow painting adventure. Here's the finished painting how it turned out and I'm so glad you joined me today and I hope I see you again soon. Take care.